slope from a graph. So slope measures the steepness of a line and is given in the formula rise over run. So the slope in its most basic form is just rise over run. It's the ratio of the up or down, the change on the y, which is the rise, compared to the run, which is the change on our x. So if we're starting to talk about the steepness of this red line, we're comparing how far we're going up or down. We're comparing the rise, the change on the y, compared to how far it's going from left to right, how far it's running on the x. We have rise over run as our ratio. So when we're talking about the a slope of a line or the steepness of a line, we're talking about comparing or the ratio of the rise over the run or the rise compared to the run would tell us how steep the line is. So if we're given a graph, we're given a graph of this blue line and we have points given and we wanna find the rise from point A to point B. So the rise is talking about how much are we changing on the Y axis going up or down from A to B. And if I look at from A to B, I could count up from A, you count up, three spaces, one, two, three spaces. So I'd say we have three spaces for my rise and find the run from point A to B. Well, from A to B to run, the change on the X, I can also count my spaces, one, two. I have two spaces for my run. So slope is rise over run. So what are we looking for? Write the fraction of rise over run from A to B. Well, that's just making a fraction of the amount of rise, the spaces I had for rise of three spaces over the two spaces I had for run. So I have three over two. Does the line have a positive or negative slope? Well, if I look at this line from left to right, just like how we read from left to right, if I look at it from left to right, I can see it's going up from left to right. So that means we have a positive slope. And it might be handy just to write your name along. If you write your name along here, you can kind of see that it's going up from left to right as you write your name across the line. Um, it has a positive slope. So this has a positive slope. So we just have a positive number and we don't have to necessarily write positive. If we could, it wouldn't be right or make it right or wrong um, because with positive numbers, we don't always write plus in front of them. So what is the slope of our blue line, our line AB? Our slope is three over two. Okay, let's look at a new one. Let's look at, find the rise from point A to B. So we have a new line. And it doesn't matter if we call this BA or AB, it doesn't change the direction based on the letter. We just still have this line in blue. And we're using the points given, but we could use any two points along the line, we'll find the same slope. So in this point, we're using from A to B. So to find the rise between A and B, I can count up two spaces, one space, two space. Remember, we're counting spaces, not lines. So two spaces here for the rise and for the run. Find the run from point A to B. I'm gonna count spaces one, two, three, four spaces in run. And I could have just as well drawn these below A and B and still gotten four spaces for uh, the run and two spaces for the rise. Um, I just need to make sure I always write it in the form of rise over run. So write the fraction of rise over run. So rise over run, my rise was two, my run was four. So I have two fours. Does the line have a positive or negative slope? Well, if I look at this line from left to right, just like I read from left to right, or if I wrote my name on this from left to right, it's going down from left to right. We have a negative slope. So if I put all this together, my um, ask to find the slope, what's the slope of line AB or slope of line BA? It is negative because we know it's going down, so I'm gonna use my negative sign. And two-fourths um, would reduce to the fraction of one-half. So I have negative two-fourths or reduced, I have negative one-half. And we don't need decimals. We actually like to have fractions for slope. We like to have rise and run. So no reason to change that to a decimal. I would reduce if possible to make it easier to work with. 
Now, these form right triangles if I'm using horizontal and vertical lines. So when we use vertical and horizontal lines to count the slope of a line, we are using right triangles because if I have a vertical line, I can easily count the spaces. If I have a horizontal line, I can easily count the spaces. But when it comes along a tilted line, anything that's not a horizontal or vertical, then we'd have to use other methods to find out exactly how big it is. But with horizontal and vertical, we can simply count the spaces. So this makes a right triangle where we have a horizontal and vertical line meet. It makes this right triangle. And if we drew that in, it would look like this. We have a right triangle that we made with this vertical and horizontal line. And we can use that to count our rise and run just like we did in the previous problems. So we are using right triangles here to count the rise and the run. And I could have drawn this triangle below it between the two points would give me the exact same slope. So which triangles can be used to find slope? So if I look at this orange line and I have four different triangles here, which ones would help me find the slope? Well, not all of them will work. I'm looking for ones that have vertical lines and horizontal lines that make right triangles because I can count the spaces for a vertical line. Like if I wanted to count the spaces along here, I could, and count the horizontal, I could. So um, triangles that we could use to find the line, two and four are not going to help. I can't exactly count how many spaces this would be because it's not along a vertical or horizontal. Um, same thing along here. I can't tell how long this line is. But both of the red triangles are right triangles where I can count the spaces of the vertical line or count the spaces of the horizontal line. So the red triangles, which are triangles one and three, we can use to count the rise and the run. Two and four would not help us count the rise and the run. So let's go ahead and look at counting the rise and run from that. Um, is the slope of the orange line positive or negative? Well, if I look at this line from left to right, it is going down from left to right. So it has a negative slope. What is the rise and run using triangle one? Well, if I'm looking at triangle one, the rise is the up or down. Remember, that's the change on the Y. I have one, two, three spaces for rise. And the run, one, two, three spaces for run. So I have three over three for rise over run, which three over three is the same as one. And if I look at what's the rise and the run of triangle three, my rise, one, two, three, four, and my run, one, two, three, four. I have four over four. So would it matter which triangle we use to find the slope? No, we find one either way. And we can use any two points on the line. We want to make points where we could easily draw a triangle and count exactly what the rise and run is. But no matter where we draw a right triangle, we would get the same ratio of rise to run. So both of these triangles um, gave me a slope of one. And we know we have a negative line going from left to right. So our slope is negative one. All right, you guys try to answer these questions. Pause the video here, answer all the questions, and come back and see how you did. All right, welcome back. So we're going to find the rise from A to B. Well, I would count how many spaces. I can do it above it, or I could have done it over here below the blue line and counted one, two, three, four, five for my rise. And then my run, one, two for the run. Then my fraction would be five over two. And the line from left to right is going up from left to right, so it has a positive slope. So my slope is positive 5 halves. All right, you guys find the slope of this one. Pause the video here, come back. All right, welcome back. So I'm still using rise and run. I can count the number of points for rise here, or I can do it here. Either way, I have uh, two going up. And one, two, three, four, five going down, and it goes down from left to right. So my slope is negative two fifths. Well, what if we aren't given points? Well, then if you're given a problem where you don't have points, you're going to pick points. So you guys try to find the slope of this one, pick your own points, and pick them in good places to count your rise and run. 
pause the video, come on back. All right, so when it comes to picking my points here, I'm gonna try to pick points where I can tell definitely they cross. This looks like it crosses definitely at zero, zero. And it looks like it crosses here as well as what? One, two, three, four, five, two. Um, that looks to be a good point. And then I could mentally draw in the rise and the run. So I have a rise of two and a run of five. And is this slope going up or down from left to right? Well, it's going up from left to right. So positive slope, so positive two fifths. And I could have drawn it in here or in here, but I want to draw somewhere where I can tell it's definitely crossing. So you don't want to deal with fractions or decimals in the middle. You can't really count those easily. So find two places where you tell where your line is definitely crossing with a coordinate behind it. Remember, there are some special cases when it comes to slope of a line. Every horizontal line, the slope is zero. The equation always looks like y equals a number, like in this case, y equals negative four. And every vertical line has no slope, or we sometimes say undefined. Um, and this is the graph of x equals negative two. So every horizontal line, the slope is zero, and every vertical line, the slope is undefined or no slope. Hope this helps you guys get going on, on finding slope of lines. Have a great day.